Welcome back to our video modules on statics. We've been exploring centroids and center of gravity for two sessions now. What I'd like to do today is say, well, well, what does it look like? How do you actually use this stuff to do something fun and cool? So what I'd like to do is I, uh, well, first I've written down the definition of your first moment of A about the y-axis. That's just Q of y equals, here's your centroid location. Um, integral of x dA. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to make up a shape. Let's uh, let's say we have this shape. Something I did last time is I did this and this and this. All right. And I put that on, um, let's say, on the x. Just given a little bit of space so you can, between the axis and the object so you can see it. Um, I'd like to know what the centroid is of this object. Well, by our intuition, we know something right off the bat. We know that the centroid is somewhere right along this axis. We don't know what it is vertically. So let's give us some numbers. Let's, uh, let's say this is, um, let's see, four inches. These each are one inch. And the diameter here is, uh, let's make it three inches. Okay. The width here is, uh, well, well, let's, let's make the width two inches. And the diameter here, 1.5 inches. All right. None of, none of these are working. Hold on. Hold on. We have to make something that works. Um, diameter here, two inches this three inches. All right, so it's not completely to scale, but it's close. Now, in this case, we want to um, figure out, uh, we know what the first moment is about the y-axis. We know that's going to be at um, x, c, it's going to be at 1.5 inches. We know that because everything's symmetrical. We're good there. What we need to know is q of x, and the reason we need to know that is because we need to know the center of gravity in the vertical direction. So let's write down our equation. We know that the areas times y, center of gravity, um, is going to be the area, the whole area, times the y, which is the center of gravity. Well, remember, we can do this in composites. We can say that that's the area of the box. We'll name this whole thing the box, bx. Well, let's just do box. Box times the y of the box. And now, to clarify, we're going to subtract. Let's check out this box. This box has holes in it. Maybe I wasn't clear about that. This box is a box with holes, and we need to know where the center of gravity is. OK, well, we have one, but let's take a look at this. How are we going to subtract out this area? Well, that's the cool thing about these composites. Simply subtract it out. The area of BC for big circle times the center of gravity of the big circle. And then you're going to subtract, now in the vertical direction, these two are both the same. So we're going to multiply it by 2. 2 times the area of LC for the little circle, YC, little circle. Now we're going to plug in our numbers and try and figure it out. Go ahead and put the video on pause and um, see if you can get at least get see if you can get these numbers in correctly. I'll do the same thing. But before you do, I better give you some dimensions. Let's uh, let's say that this shape is uh, in the center is one and a half inches. And let's say the center here is uh, one inch. That should give you enough information to uh, to move forward. Scratch that. Scratch that. Uh, I meant two and a half inches here. Two and a half inches here. There you go. Two and a half inches vertical here. One inch vertical to right there. That should help you out. So here we are. We have, um, I've gone through and put all my numbers in. We take the area of the box, times 
times the vertical component of the center of gravity. We know that. It's symmetrical. It's right up in the middle. And we're going to take the area of, let's start off with um, the top circle. I did pi r squared. The area of the circle times its center of gravity. And we know that because I gave you its position. I'm going to subtract out this. Once again, pi r squared. And you're going to end up with 14.5. This is the first moment about the x-axis. But that's not what we really want to know. What we want to know is the coordinates for the um, for the center of gravity. So in order to do that, we're going to find the area of the box or the area of the the, the real area. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and write all these numbers in. Here we are. We've plugged all the numbers in, and we find out that uh, the total area is 7.3. So in order to find, let's uh, let's write our equation here. Q about the x-axis equals a times the center of gravity. Well, uh, Q is 14.5, and that is the area, which is 7.3 times the y value, which means that the um, if we plug that into a calculator. We'll find out that the y value is 1.99. All right. Now let's take a look at that. Does, does that does that resonate? Does that kind of make sense with what we see? Well, we expect that it's going to be around two, right? We expect that it's going to be around two because that would be the center of the box and. We kind of have some area up here that's being subtracted, and then we have roughly the same amount of area that's being subtracted down here. Okay, so it looks like our rough calculations, we may have made some uh, rounding, might have introduced some errors, but we've gotten the answer that we expect. So in that case, what we'd say is that um, the, uh, the centroid is at 1.5, inches comma will be precise 1.99 inches. Now of course I know that you know we didn't round consistently there. Using this technique we can find centroids. Now I'd like to also uh, do something else. Um, I'd like to play a little bit and my play would be let's imagine you know you get these tables of centroids but let's imagine for a minute that we don't have those tables and we have some sort of shape. I like the arc because it's always it's always tricky. It always introduces things you weren't expecting. At least at least it does for me. And we have an arc, and we'll call it R. And we'll call you know this angle that it's subtending. We'll call actually we'll 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 instead of doing the full angle, we'll do half the angle, and we'll just pretend that it's duplicated. And I want to know if this angle is alpha. I want to know where's the center of gravity. Now my intuition is this looks an awful lot like a triangle, right? So I'm thinking it's going to be right around here. Well, let's find out. All right, let's do this. So if we want to know the center of gravity, we take the area times xc, um, and we integrate x dA. We do all the same things we did before. The area on this is simply going to be um, the radius times the angle subtended. And what we're going to do for this is only we're only going to look at the positive amounts. I know it's symmetrical, so I know that if I just look at everything above, it's going to be the same as if I include it all. It's symmetrical, so we're okay there. So the area is our, the radius times the angle. And what I want to know is xc, okay? And that's going to equal, let's see if we can do this, our x value of whatever sliver we take. Well, let's pretend that we take a sliver, okay? Now let's, let's blow that up. Now this sliver, we're going to say is really small. Now if it's really small, we're really close to a triangle, and we know that a triangle 
is two thirds of the way here, one third here. Okay, so I know that I'm going to look at two thirds of the way all the way to this distance. Uh, let's say the total distance, I'm going to go two thirds of it. Well, the total distance is the radius times the cosine, what we'll call this theta, the cosine of theta. Okay, so I've been able to find out where the x is and now I simply need to figure out what the area is. Well, the area is going to be easy. That's going to be radius times d theta. Great, great. So let's let's isolate um, let's isolate x c. We find out, and we have we're going to bring out that two thirds. We're going to bring out that r. Both of those r's, so they're going to be an r squared times the integral of cosine theta d theta. We're going to divide it by this term right here, which is r alpha. Okay. Now let's integrate this from zero to alpha, the full amount. Okay. And we're going to let's uh, cancel out that r squared. That that reduces that r, and we get integral of cosine theta d theta is two r. That's going to be simply sine sine theta minus sine zero. So that's sine alpha. Sorry, sine alpha minus sine zero. Sine alpha all over. 3 alpha. So this is a way where we can use our calculus to find out where the centroid is of an object. And in fact, if you go to your tables, you'll find that uh, this, in fact, is the answer. So hopefully this gives you a little bit of working vocabulary of how to use um, both calculus to solve, to identify strain shapes, as well as how to use composite plates or composite shapes. Thanks so much, and I look forward to uh, seeing you on the other side of...